Hey folks, it's Joshua Bardwell here from the uh, from the land of the glaring head. <laughs> Sorry about that. I cut my hair again today. Um, yeah, I just have a quick note for you before we go over to part three of the Korea Rhea Talon build. Um, I've had some comments from people who, I don't know, maybe they're not as familiar with the channel. Uh, and the comments have, uh, very few of them, by the way, not too many of them, but they've focused on a couple of things. One of them is the pace of the videos. Uh, you know, I some of my videos are shorter, some of them are longer. Uh, when I do these build videos, sometimes I like to really just, you know, I uh, some people have likened it to Bob Ross' Joy of Painting, which I find to be a very complimentary. I don't take that claim to myself, but it's slow. You just sit there and you soak it in. If that's not for you, I dig it. I get it. You Not everybody wants to sit there and watch me solder for 20 minutes, but some people do, and these videos are for you. I haven't forgotten you guys are out there now that, now that uh, you know, I am where I am. And then number two, some people have really surprisingly strong, like almost got angry about the equipment I'm putting on this build, that this is a top-notch, top-tier frame, and I'm daring to put like, well, I think mostly it's the flight controller, the HGLRC flight controller on it. I Hey, you know what? I only have so much time to build, and if I only ever built with top-notch expensive stuff, then, you know, you would accuse me of, of having lost touch with the common man. So I'm not going to do that. And yeah, you could say, okay, well, put the HDLRC flight controller on like a cheap frame. Get a, get a nice top end. But the thing is, you know, that's what I wanted to put. I want, I've always wanted to try one of them. And so when I got this frame, I said, well, what am I going to put on it? And I was like, oh, I'll try that one. And, you know, you, let's not be snobbish here. It'll fly or it won't fly. And if it craps out and it's terrible, then I'll replace it and I'll tell you, hey, it was terrible, <laughs> you know. But let's not pretend that that flight controller can't fly this frame as good as anything. And if it, yeah, if it dies, then it dies and we'll put something else on it. Um, the other complaint, and this one actually is legit. I, I got a cop to this one. They said, I can't believe you're not using a 4-in-1 ESC on that one. I, you know, this frame is all about aerodynamics and you're putting ESCs on the arms. And I said, oh, come on, how much thicker could they really make the arms? And um, it turns out actually uh, kind of a lot. <laughs> the arms are like, they're like, what are they, three or four millimeters thick? And now with the ESCs on there, they're like eight millimeters thick. So yeah, and it's like, well, how long are the ESCs anyway? And yeah, it's pretty much like the, almost the whole length of the arm. So I got a cop to that, but you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not, I mean, I, I'll, maybe I'll swap them out for a four and one later after I see how it flies. But for now, we are where we are. We're going to continue. If, you, if that upsets you, please don't watch this video. That's the bottom line. I make a lot of videos. The great thing about me is I make like five, six, sometimes even seven videos a week. So if you hate one of them, you're still getting way more content than you get on almost any other channel. So, hey, there you go. Let's get into the build. Now I'm going to install the motors um, because we're going to be mounting the ESCs on the side of the arm. So I want to get the motor wires right. Yeah. And I can't forget that I need to install these. And I'm 100% sure that the frame came with the screws that I need here, but I can't find them. I, I must have mislaid, mis mislaid, waylaid them, mis put them somewhere. And so I'm just going to pull some screws out of my setup. We'll just check the length the screw is. Yeah, that's perfect. And you can see there it's just the right length to not quite. Yeah, that's perfect. Couldn't get better than that. Oh, ho, ho, ho. I see. I see, I see. No, no. So yeah, you gotta you gotta use different length screw for this one versus that one because this one has the the carbon spar whatever plate and the other one doesn't. So Career Rio would advise you to Loctite these. I um I never Loctite my motors and it's never been a problem for me. So I'm not going to. I always just keep them tight. Just in the interest of doing the video faster, I'm not going to bother. The um, the motor mounts have sort of double double screw holes here. I think so you can mount a 16 by 9. One's I'm guessing one's 16, and one's 19 millimeter diameter. So you can mount a 16 by 19 motor, 
any way you prefer. Getting them to line up correctly, yeah, is a little tricky. It's easy to put the screw through the wrong hole and then not be able to get the other ones to fit. So I got to really check this and make sure they're lined up correctly before I commit. Is there a wrong way to mount? No, it's, it's surely not. It seems like no matter how I line the motor up, it doesn't quite fit the the screw holes. So then I need short ones. That's a long one. Longer. And now all four motors are installed. The um, the motor mounts are a little bit fiddly. Like so much of this copter is a little bit fiddly. Um, you got two different screw holes, screw sizes, because one of the screws has to go through this piece here, so it's got to be a longer screw. The other screw does not. So then you end up you end up with that going on. So it's a little it's a little weird. But I found all the right size screws. I got them all installed. Um, yeah, so good. All the motors are installed. To install the ESCs right here on the arm would require me to cut the wires pretty short. And I guess that's what I'm gonna do, although I'm half tempted to find some way to leave them a little bit longer um, in case I need to do a four in one, because uh, I want to do a four in one later. I gotta wonder if I can, can I fold them back maybe? Well, it's already bad enough that I'm not doing a four in one ESC here, so I'm gonna do it proper. I almost think it might have been smart to install the ESCs and motors on the arms before I installed them on the frame, frankly, since I'm not doing a four-in-one. What I usually like to do is use some double-sided foam tape to hold the ESC in place and then solder to directly to it. I'm not sure I'm going to do that in this case because it would be pretty hard to accomplish. So, I really, I really think I should have done this before I put the frame together, soldered the ESC to the arm, and then you now I still would have to solder the power. Ugh, bleh. I'm going to use the ESC as a spacer. I'm going to hold it at the end here just to keep the motors consistent, and I'm going to snip the wires basically at the s in between the FETs. That's where I'm going to snip them. Okay, just like that. Okay. Um, I would do all four at once, but since I'm kind of making this up as I go, I am going to just see how this comes out before I do the other three. If you do this, you must hold the ESC absolutely still while the joint is cooling. Or you'll get a bad joint. Yeah. 
Um, visual inspection. I was getting just a little ice cream cone peak coming off of this one. So I put just a little more flux on it, a little more, a little more fresh solder on it to add a little flux and then hit it with some heat and that smoothed it right out. That's, uh, that's how you deal with that. If you're getting that little ice cream cone, soft serve ice cream cone peak, you know, little mountaintop, um, then that's what you should do. Add a little flux or if you're using rosin core solder, add fresh solder and it'll, it'll sort it right out. Now, what are we going to do here? I think I'm going to give this a little twist just for, just because. Yeah, yeah, I like that. That's probably where that's going to end up. Some people laugh about me soft mounting my ESCs. It's not for the reason you might think. It's, um... It's to protect them from um, shock against the board and also to keep them from grounding out against the carbon. Whenever I do something like this, I think about what direction the props are spinning. So my props are going to be spinning standard direction, which means they're always going to be hitting here and here if they get bent down. So I'm going to put the ESC on the other side of the arm so that if a prop gets bent, it's not going to hit the ESC. If I were to put it in the front, it could hit the ESC. Well... I am out of, this is, what is this, 18 gauge, 20, 20, oh. I'm out of 20 gauge silicon wire, I used it, what did I use it for, I don't know, um, so I'm going to break my cardinal rule, and I'm going to use these leftover motor wires to power my ESC, and the reason I don't like doing that is that I always want a red wire for positive and a black wire for negative, because then I, it makes it harder to screw that up, I just really playing with fire, to break that rule, but let's give it a go. What I'm gonna do then to try to avoid screwing it up is I'll solder all the negatives first and all the positives second, and hopefully nothing will go bang. When you do that, you just want to apply the lightest pressure until the joint starts to melt and flow, and then it will push together with the tiniest bit of pressure. If you push real hard on the wire, when the wire solder becomes liquid, the wire can spread out, and then you have a really messy joint, and it can even bridge to adjacent pads. So just touch the soldering iron to the, to the cold, solid wire, with, uh, with the wire touching on top, sandwiched on the tin pad, and then wait, and the heat will flow in and cause the solder to become liquid and the joint to become liquid, and they will meld together. That's, that's how you do it. Okay, so then I think you get the gist here. I'm going to put a negative and a positive wire and a signal wire on the ESCs, and I'll come back when it's time to actually solder them to the board. As is so often the case, I, I did the ESC the stupid way the first time, and then I figured out a better way. So the smart way to do it is to first so the smart way to do it is to first solder the power and signal wire to the ESC before you install it on the copter. Um, for signal wire I'm using some of this this is a Strive Day uh, it's, it's silicon insulation uh, hookup wire and I think this is 26 gauge I can't remember, 26 gauge I would guess Mm, I always use between 22 and 26 gauge for signal wire for low power, you know, like power to a video transmitter, something less than an amp or amp and a half. Anyway, so this is really good stuff to have around um, because there's often you don't you don't have silicon wire, and now you do. Um, and then after you put the power and the signal wire on, then solder these in place using my tweezers. I always solder straight through the wires just straight and then reverse in BL Heli. I know there are a few ESCs that don't like that. Very few and they're not as in use as they once were. I don't think there's generally a problem with, with reversing in BL Heli though. As opposed to switching the wires. 
So since I don't know which way the wires are going to go here, I just, uh, I am going to go ahead and just put a strip of tape around these to hold them in place while I finish. But I'm not going to cover them up so that I can see where the um, positive and negative is because I did not use uh, red and black wire. This is um, Scotch 35 red vinyl electric tape. I prefer vinyl electric tape to PVC. Um, I think it has a, it stretches and it con conforms to, it almost acts like sh sh shrink wrap or heat shrink or something, the way it conforms to the surface. I think it looks nicer and it sticks better. See, that's really nice how it, yeah, that's, that's really nice. I wish I had some of the other stuff to show you the difference. It's a little bit tactile. You can't really 100% tell just by looking, but it's got a more of a matte finish and it doesn't stretch nearly as well and doesn't sort of conform to the shape nearly as well. Um, but what I was using was a uh, duck brand and I really hated it. Duck brand electric tape. It's all that they carry at the local store though. I can't find scotch at all and I don't know why. It's a conspiracy I'm sure. The other stuff I use is the Super 88 which is heavier uh, and thicker. I mean, this is that's the real deal, um, but it's also more expensive. Now, this is the part that I'm going to screw up because I use all black wires. So I'm going to very carefully make sure I solder all the negatives first and then all the positives. And then we'll test it with a multimeter to see if I've made a mistake. What I want to show you here is that when I heated the joint, you see how we've got this little uh, sort of dollop of solder on top. And then there is another layer of solder underneath. I'm not sure I can really get the camera to show that very clearly. What's happened is that the solder on the wire got hot, but the solder on the pad did not. And that is not a, that's not a good joint. You don't want to leave it like that. You want everything to flow together. And that happened because I'm trying to solder without putting my head in the camera, without getting my face down close. But here, I'm going to have to do it. So now you should see that the joint is all flowed together. And that's what you want to see. It's clearly become, there's a nice angle on it. It's become completely liquid and has formed, a, you can see the shape of it. It's nice and smooth. Well, this is incredibly annoying. <laughs> um, I like normally to route my wires in from the inside of the board. I think it's neater that way. Uh, the signal pads are right here and oops here. So they're such that you'll cover them up with the wires while you're working if you're not careful. So I guess solder the signal first, but that's a little bit obnoxious.